So about a year ago, I built this white oak table and benches. The table is 10 feet long and 36 inches wide, and I built it for out here on our outdoor patio, which my wife and I really wanted for out here when we built the patio. We kind of built it so that it would have space for a nice big dining table, so there'd be plenty of room for not only us and our kids, but also uh, the grandparents or family or friends or whoever wants to stop by and have dinner out here. So I built this table out of a couple of logs. I sawed up right here in our backyard about 50 feet that way. So let me show you how the whole process went. So back in the fall of 2014, I had just been finishing up my patio project and my friend Jim brought me these two white oak logs that had been sitting out in the forest for who knows how long because he was worried I wouldn't have enough to do once I was done with the patio. So I started off by slabbing the bigger log with my chainsaw mill. I cut the first two slabs at 12 quarter, which would become the tabletop. And the other slabs I cut at 16 quarter, which would become the base of the table. I cut the slabs from the smaller log at 9 quarter, and those would become the tops for the benches. This slabbing adventure was actually one of my earlier videos. I'll leave a link to that in the cards and in the description. So once these were all cut, I stacked them behind my shed and they sat there for almost a year. The following year, my dad helped me unstack the slabs so I could start breaking them down into the parts for the table. I started with the stock for the tops. They were pretty much the right length. I just had to trim a little bit off the ends and the biggest thing I did was remove the edges that were kind of rotten anyway. The stock for the top of the benches was a little bit goofier since I wanted rectangular stock and these slabs had a very crazy shape. With that out of the way, I can start working on the material for the base of the table. Since these are pretty big slabs, I broke these down with my chainsaw following my layout lines and I laid out a lot of the parts as doubles since a lot of the parts had duplicates and it just worked out that most of the areas that I could use for the table base were about 8 inches wide. After I cut out all of the parts I was going to need for the table base, I used the remainder to cut as many parts for the bench bases as I could. So the following summer I pulled all the stock out of the basement and started working on actually making the table. And I started with flattening the slabs to the top. The first slab I did was too wide for my jointer and planer, so I flattened and thicknessed the whole thing with a router sled. The second slab was wide enough for my planer, so I used my jointer to flatten as wide of a face as possible, and then I brought down the extra material with the handheld power planer. That gave me a flat bottom so I could then send the whole thing through my planer and bring it down to the same thickness as the first slab I did with the router sled. My friend Dima came over and gave me a hand running these over the jointer and then we glued the two slabs together to form the top. And once the glue is dry I can cut the tabletop down to its final length. Next I added the breadboard ends to the table which started with cutting the mortises into the breadboard ends themselves. Back outside I cut tongues on the ends of the tabletop and then I cut the tongue into the individual tenons, which would go into the breadboard ends. Next, I can drill the holes to the dowels that will hold the breadboard ends onto the table. I mark the hole location onto the tenons, and then I drill the hole through the tenons slightly closer to the shoulder. To allow the tabletop to move throughout the seasons, the holes on the outside tenons are elongated into slots. The breadboard ends can now be installed with glue only applied to the center tenon. Now on to the base of the table. All the parts get broken down from double into single and then everything is milled down into square stock. And the material for the base ends up at three and a half inches square. All the parts can get cut down to their final length and the ends of the legs get cut at an angle since they splay out. I'm starting with the joinery on the side assemblies. So I'll start by cutting the mortises into the upper rail and into the legs that will receive the lower rail. The tenons on the side assemblies are all angled, so I lay out the angled shoulder first with a knife line and then use a table saw to roughly remove all the stock I need to to create a tenon that's the right size, but it's not all the way back to the shoulder line. Now I can bring the pieces back to the bench and chop directly back to that shoulder line, ensuring that I have a perfect shoulder all the way around. 
And lastly, I can cut them down to their final width, squaring them off of the shoulder. And I can do that with a handsaw and some chisel work. Now I can move on to the connecting assembly. So I can cut the mortises into the rails on the side assemblies to receive the connecting assembly. And next I can start cutting the tenons on the long rails. So since the connecting rails are right around eight feet long, I thought it'd be a lot easier to cut this by hand. So I used some hand saws to cut the rough shape and then refine things further with some chisels. Next I can start working on the braces, so I'll cut the mortises into the connecting rails for those. The braces can then be cut to final length and the angled tenon can be formed on the ends of them. Now to prepare the base for glue up, all of the mortise and tenon joints are going to get draw board. So I'll drill all the offset holes through all the mortise and tenons for the draw boring. I'll also drill the holes which will hold the top down to the base. The bottoms of the legs receive a chamfer and a coating of epoxy. Now on to the actual glue up. I used epoxy for the glue up to give me as much working time as I could possibly need. And the assembly was really easy since all I had to do is drive a dowel through each joint which pulls the joint really tight and means you don't need any clamps at all. With the side assemblies all joined together, I could join together the connecting assembly. And then the final assembly can be done outdoors by connecting the side assemblies with the connecting assembly. And now a few details in preparation for finish. I can trim all the pegs flush, all the surfaces received a nice sanding, and then I broke all the edges by hand. Since this is going to be an outdoor table, I'm doing an outdoor finish on it. I started with a clear pan treading epoxy sealer, which strengthens some of the weaker fibers that I have in this table, and also gives a nice base for the marine varnish to stick to. So the finish I'll be using is Epiphanes. It's a really durable outdoor finish, and it comes really thick in the can, and that allows you to thin it to whatever consistency you want. So I thinned mine by about 20% or so, and that made it flow out really nicely as I brush it on to all the parts. I applied five coats of epiphanes over the course of probably a week or so. Each coat took around 24 hours to dry, and since I was finishing this outside, I had to deal with all the rain this time of year. The sheen on the regular epiphanes is extremely high gloss, which wasn't really a look I was going for, so I applied two coats of their matte top coat, which really knocked down the gloss and made for a really even look. With the table out of the way, I can move on to the benches. And the process for making the benches is pretty much exactly the same thing as I went through to make the table, since all of the joinery and the overall design is basically just to have them be miniature tables. So one of the bench tops came from just one single board, and the other one I had to glue up two boards to get the width that I needed. The bases of the benches were built exactly the same way as the table base. They received all drawboard mortise and tenon joinery, and the only difference between the base of the table and the benches is that the benches don't have the braces on them. The benches also received exactly the same finishing process as the table with one coat of CPES and then five coats of the Epiphanes followed by two coats of the matte top coat. The final detail was to attach the tops and those get joined to the bases with some lag bolts. So the table's been done and out here for a little over a year, and the benches have been out here for a little under a year. So the table at least has seen the full range of the Minnesota climate from hot, sticky summers all the way to freezing cold, ridiculous winters. And the finish on here is holding up really well. It still looks as good or like exactly the same as 
the day that I applied the finish, which is pretty awesome. So the video you just watched is actually cut down from the Guild Project, which is 14 videos along with a set of plans, and I'll leave a link to that down in the description. Those 14 videos and those plans walk you through the entire process to make this table or one sized a little differently, but still using the same design. So definitely check that out. Other than that though, I'm gonna go inside because it's kind of cold today. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the table, anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. <laughs> and until next time, happy woodworking.